Hello everyone, it's Lindsay, and for today's video I thought it'd be fun to share with you some different ways to use the stamp sets from By the Will for God uh, outside of your Bible journaling. So I was kind of inspired by this new one. This is assembled in his image. Uh, it's over in the shop now, and it had all these cute little robots. So I wanted to do some paper piecing, playing with some um, metallic mediums. I'm going to be using Perfect Pearls today. Um, but as I was looking through my stamps, I had several stamps that I just haven't used in a while or um, hadn't used at all. And I did double check and these are all still in the shop. So everything will be linked down below for you guys. And I wanted to kind of share with you how I'm using these and I'm going to create some little note cards for my boys. Now these can go in lunch boxes on their mirror. Um, maybe you want to do one every day of the week, maybe only once a week. Um, you could do um, Valentine's just by changing the colors up. So lots of different ways that you could use these uh, outside of just the typical Bible journaling. I want to make the most out of my stamp sets and you know just put them to use. So we're going to be using some Distress Oxide inks, have some perfect pearls, doing some embossing, um, watercoloring with oxide inks, and all of these techniques can kind of be altered depending on the mediums that you have in your stash and what you want to use. So uh, ahead of time, just to save time for the video, I did go ahead and cut out all of my cards. I'm using some Canson watercolor I will link, paper. I will link that down below. Uh, I get the one that comes in 9 by 12 sheets, so you can get 12 cards, uh, 3 by 4 cards out of a 9 by 12 uh, sheet of watercolor paper. Um, just, you know, cutting it down four the long way, three the short way gives you 12. I did go ahead and use a um, the crocodile corner chomper and the quarter inch side to round the corners just to give them a little bit more of a finished look and does make it a little bit easier when you're blending ink on these. So uh, one nice thing about the Canson watercolor paper is it does have a rough side and a smooth side. So if you're having some difficulty stamping on this or if you don't have a stamp positioning tool like I do, uh, stamp on the smoother side and you should get better results. So I went ahead and did that. I also went ahead and stamped and colored uh, a few different images. The ones that I colored with markers, I'm not gonna show on camera because it's very, very simple, but for those I use the Peaceful Critters stamp set. My kids love little animals, um, especially little foxes and things like that. And I just use some Faber-Castell brush markers. I like the bigger ones for a job like this, um, especially for these big images because they color in super, super quick. You could go in and do fancy shading and things like that, but I didn't worry about that. I just laid down some color. And the nice thing about working on watercolor paper is it really can take a lot of ink. And so you don't have to worry about destroying um, cheaper card stocks with those juicy markers. So if you are going to use the markers, keep that in mind. But you could also color these in with acrylic paints, gelatos, watercolors, Neocolor 2 crayons, whatever you have, whatever medium you like to use, color those in super quick. Um, I will be showing you how I colored this little guy in. I don't know if you can tell, but he is nice and shiny and metallic. And I did some paper piecing, so I will be showing you that. So let me go ahead and put you on fast forward, and I will show you a few different backgrounds and how simple these are to put together. Okay, so we're going to start with the octopus, which is probably the easiest of the four cards. I'm just blending some Distress Oxide ink using a mini ink blending tool. This is one of the foam ones. I'm working on a non-stick uh, craft sheet, and this just works best when I'm getting messy with inks and things like that. So I'm blending these two colors on. This is Broken China and Cracked Pistachio. I like Distress Oxide inks for this technique because they blend together super, super, super easy, super fast. Uh, I'm just using a scrap piece of paper to keep my fingerprints out of it, and then that's it. It's done. It's good to go. I am going to add a little bit of water to this because these are water reactive inks. So I'm using a Distress Sprayer. If you just pull halfway on the trigger, you get big splotchy spots like this. If you pull all the way down, you get a fine mist. So you do have some options there. And these inks are water reactive. So you can see you can pull up the ink, which is super easy on watercolor paper, uh, and give you kind of this fun uh, bubbly texture in the background. You can go ahead and stick down my little octopus that I did ahead of time. And then I am going to add some Crystal Nouveau drops. Uh, this is the Dew Drop one. It's clear when it dries completely to add some bubble detail. 100% not needed. These do take like overnight to dry. Uh, so just keep that in mind, but it just adds kind of a fun texture and dimension on there. And I had it in my stash and I hadn't used it in a while. So pulled it out. This is a great way to use supplies in your stash that you haven't used in a while. 
Moving on to the robot. So I went ahead and stamped them out using some Versifying Onyx Black ink, pulled out some Perfect Pearls, and then these are the, um, I think they're like Perfect Medium pens. They're from Ranger. Basically they have like Versamark ink inside the pens. They have two packages with different nib sizes and types, and you're just going to color in anywhere you want the Perfect Pearls to stick. So um, I'm just coloring in, doing one color, you know, first, and then the second color. That way I don't get any kind of weird mixing or anything like that. I did notice that these pens seem to reactivate the Versafine ink that I stamped in, which is typically a permanent ink. So just keep that in mind. You want to stay within the lines um, and just carefully color it in. And then this mica powder is going to stick to wherever you colored with that pen. So you can see I'm brushing it on with a fluffy brush that does come in the Perfect Pearl kit and brush off the excess and now you have instant shine and shimmer and super easy so you can go in and color all the different areas use different colors of perfect pearls and it gives you this fun me metallic effect now these pearls do have a binder in them and so to activate that you need to spray it with some plain water so i'm just using the light mist of water and then heat setting it and that's what activates the binder that's in the powder and makes it so that this won't rub off so it, it should be permanent now there will be some transferring just because of the nature of it but this makes it so it doesn't just completely rub off of your image once that ink has dried I also stamped that uh, robot on some pattern paper and fussy cut out the little heart to add to him. And that is it for the robot. Now we're gonna work on the background. So sticking with some Distress Oxides, I'm using um, Pumice Stone and Frayed Burlap. I think that this is my favorite background. I had so much fun with this. I don't really do grungy very often, but I have boys. So I'm gonna take advantage of getting to do some grungy backgrounds. So. I'm just blending a little bit of the frayed burlap around the edges, um, just kind of, you know, playing around, going messy, not doing anything, you know, fancy. Again, these are for kids, so don't stress about it. <laughs> I am going to add a little bit of water to this as well to add some texture, and then I do go and blend in some color over the top just so it's not so um, stark contrast with those splotches. And then I want to make sure this is good and dry because again, the perfect pearls stick to anything that's sticky. So you want to make sure your ink is 100% dry. I'm also going over it with a powder tool just to make sure that it is completely dry and nothing sticky on it. I've gone ahead and uh, grabbed some of these gear stamps. These are also from By the Well for God and I'm inking them up. Here I'm using the Ranger version of Versamark, but you can use Versamark or this. I've linked both down below. I'm gonna go ahead and stamp that on the card and it's a clear sticky ink so you can't see it um, but that's gonna allow the perfect pearls to grab a hold of those stamped images so I'm switched to this kind of gun metal color of perfect pearls again just using a fluffy brush to tap it on there I tried to go in kind of sparingly because I don't want to waste this powder I mean I guess you could pour it back into the container but um, I just take a little bit of it at a time and then that way I also don't get too much excess on the background and you can see how amazing that is. It grabs a hold of that sticky ink. Off camera I did go ahead and spray that with some water as well to activate that binder, heat set it, and now it's good to go. So I decided to add some foam adhesive to the little robot just to kind of pop him up and give him some dimension, make it a little fancy but definitely not needed, especially for sticking it in like a kid's lunchbox. You know, it's probably gonna get pretty destroyed by the end of the day, so don't stress too much. Now we're moving on to the forest critters and we're gonna incorporate some stenciling here. So I'm going in similar base. I'm using some pumice stone, some frayed burlap, but I'm also gonna pull in a little forest moss. Um, but use what you have in your stash. Don't feel like you need to go out and buy every single one of the Distress Oxide colors. Uh, use what you have. If you've got girls, you can change this and make it super girly. Use girly colors for different holidays. Um, if you're doing like Project Life or greeting cards, you can expand these techniques into different um, projects as well. I did go ahead and spray that with water, but this time instead of picking up the ink, I'm just going to go ahead and heat set it. And what this does is it creates these little like harsh edges where the ink is um, I did pick up the extra water but it just kind of gives a little bit of a different look so kind of experiment uh, experiment with both those techniques but I did blend a little bit more color over the top again just to knock back those white splatters 
Now I'm layering this autumn layering stencil from Tim Holtz over the top and I'm going in with forest moss and frayed burlap but instead of that blending motion I'm kind of doing a stamping twisting motion and this is laying down more ink more concentrated ink and it gets into all the little nooks and crannies of these detailed stencils you just want to be careful with a stencil like that and you can see how fun that dimension is to the background make sure that's good and heat set and then now i can add my little critters so you can see if you did this assembly style form and you know did all your card backgrounds and then colored all your images and cut them all out and you could knock out a bunch of these all at once and have them on hand for the upcoming week or do a month at a time um, and have them ready to go maybe you want to write scripture on the back to pass out you know to somebody that needs encouragement something like that i'm just I'm trying to encourage you to pull out your supplies and use your stash um, outside of your bible and really put it to work this final card is probably the most time consuming card. So we're gonna do a little bit of heat embossing. So I am prepping my card with the EK Success Powder Tool. Um, this just makes sure that my embossing powder only sticks to where I want it to. And I pulled out that fun little crab. I thought my kids would think that was kind of funny. So I'm inking it up with some Versamark ink. Again, that's a clear sticky ink. My stamp is filthy dirty, so you're probably gonna be able to see some of my stamped images. Um, this is a little bit tricky to stamp a pattern like this when the ink is clear. So if you need to stop and emboss along the way, um, that works too. So whatever works for you, but I'm trying to keep it simple. I don't care if they overlap. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is not going into like a card gallery. So <laughs> I'm just keeping it simple. I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of white embossing powder over the top of this, and that embossing powder is gonna to stick to my stamped images. If you have questions about uh, heat embossing, I will link a Tip Tuesday video down below for you guys. I'll put one down below for distress inks and distress oxides as well, where I talk about the differences and different ways to use them and things like that if you are not familiar with these types of inks. So you need to heat set that embossing powder till it's good and melted, and it creates these little raised areas um, where the stamping is. So once I start adding color, you'll be able to see where I stamped. So I'm going back to um, that cracked pistachio and broken china combination. I'm just taking a big flat brush and adding a wash of color to the entire back side of the, or to the front side of the card, sorry. And then I'm just dropping in some color. I want a very light wash background you can change the intensity of this use different colors I'm kind of going for an ombre effect I have found that going in lighter is a little bit easier for this next step that I'm going to show you so cleaning up my mess as I go along this just makes sure that I don't get ink anywhere where I don't want it and then at this point it's wet and I'm kind of struggling so I need to dry this layer first being careful not to reactivate my heat embossing and now that it's dry, I can take a smaller paintbrush and just some clean, plain water. And I'm adding some water, kind of scrubbing to the inside of those crabs. And then I can pick up the paint color from within those crabs. So this gives me the ability to do this really nice light wash background like I did. Um, but now I can go back in and color in these crabs with a different color and not worry about the ink colors mixing. Because if I was to come in with a red and I've got blue in there, I'm gonna end up with purple crabs. And I don't want, and not, that's not the look I'm going for. So I'm just lifting that color out of them. And then now I can go back in with some candy apple distress oxide ink and a wet brush and just watercolor with these inks. So I'm gonna go in and add that color in. The easy part about this is that the embossed edges kind of give you little walls that the paint sits in. So you don't have to be as careful with the ink you know, blending into your background. It's gonna stay within those little areas of the stamp. So I could see you doing this with a you know, wide variety of different stamps and creating these fun backgrounds. So here's a look at my four finished cards. Of course, you could do you know, a whole variety of these with just these simple backgrounds. Uh, I hope that kind of gives you some ideas for using your stamps in some different ways and using some different products you might have laying around your craft space. So if you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave those down below. Check out the description box for links to everything that I used today. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. And until next time, thank you so much. Bye-bye.